So how should you be using your £20,000 a year ISA allowance? For savings in a cash ISA or investments in a stocks and shares ISA? In this video, we pit them against each other and go five rounds to see which is best and deserves your cash. Hi, I'm Marcus De Silva and welcome to the Steps to Investing YouTube show, helping you beat high inflation with simple tutorials and strategies that get you investing in the stock market and earning a better return. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Also, if you've any questions, just pop them in the comments box below and we'll get back to you. Each tax year, the government allows us to stash up to £20,000 across the different varieties of ISA. There are four in total, but the main two we tend to go for are the cash ISA, a relatively low risk option for earning a rate of interest on your savings, and the stocks and shares ISA, which allows you to take on some risk and invest in a whole range of stock market investments. But which is better, given that current levels of high inflation feel like a sucker punch to the spending power of your cash. On the one hand, with cash ISAs, interest rates are looking increasingly attractive as they continue to rise, and you don't need to risk losing any of your hard-earned savings. But on the other hand, with stocks and shares ISAs, whilst 2022 was a pretty terrible year for stock markets, this year, things seem to be improving, which is setting the scene for you to earn some potentially juicy long-term returns. Today, we've hauled both of them into the ring, strapped up their gloves, put their mouth guards in, and are about to start the clock on five rounds to see which deserves your cash. Get ready, it's gonna be a battle to remember. Cash ISAs and stocks and shares ISAs both have the same knockout feature of being free of government taxes. With a cash ISA, you are protected from taxes that may be applied to the interest you receive on your savings outside of your personal savings allowance. With the stocks and shares ISA, you are protected from capital gains tax, CGT, as well as taxes on income from shares, known as dividends, and taxes on interest from bonds. Being free of taxes not only takes the hassle out of tax returns, but more importantly serves as a seriously generous boost to your savings, the benefits of which compound over time. What's more, the government is cutting CGT and dividend tax allowances in the new tax year, and again in the tax year after that. And who knows, the Chancellor may even go after the personal savings allowance. Whatever ISA you choose, you are protected from taxes and will avoid any uncertainty surrounding tax thresholds in the future. It looks like they're both fighting fit after round one, and it's neck and neck. For those who start feeling a bit punch drunk when thinking about losing money, cash ISAs might be the way to go. In finance, risk refers to the potential of losing money. Cash ISAs have very little risk, similar to any bank account, so you won't find the value of your savings suddenly drops. In addition, there's a safety net if your ISA provider were to collapse. You are protected by the government's financial services compensation scheme up to the value of £85,000 per person per institution. Investing in stocks and shares ISAs involves taking on some investment risk. It is the only way you are able to gain greater rewards than cash savings. This may lead to swings in the value of your investments, known as volatility, and there will be times when they may fall into the red. Some financial assets, such as shares, are also likely to be more volatile than others, such as bonds. Your ability to stomach volatility is largely down to your personality and to some extent how informed you are about investing. But for those who want their savings to avoid getting clocked, cash ices avoid the swings and win round two. Studies tell us that over the long term, investing earns us bigger rewards than savings. Barclays have actually crunched the numbers on this one through a long-term study of stock markets and compared investing in shares to cash going all the way back to 1899. What they found was that over rolling 10-year periods, shares win 91% of the time. Of course, stock market returns are not guaranteed and over short periods, 
the value of your investments can fall and potential losses can be fairly significant. But over longer periods, history tells us that stock markets tend to go up. For these reasons, you should be investing for a minimum of five years, but really 10 years or longer is ideal. You can also manage stock market risks and volatility by investing in diversified funds such as investment trusts that contain lots of stocks. At the end of round three, stocks and shares ISAs are fighting back. When levels of inflation are as high as they are now, beating it is hard. But investing through a stocks and shares ISA most likely has the upper hand versus cash ISAs. It can be tempting to think otherwise, given that interest rates are rising and looking more attractive than they have done for over a decade. But what's important is to think about the rate of interest you receive relative to the rate of inflation. Because if it's lower, the value of your cash is still going down. Last year is actually a good example. According to numbers crunched by online broker AJ Bell and figures from the Bank of England, the average cash ISA paid 0.8% in 2022, and yet inflation hit double digits over the course of the year. It meant that if you had invested £1,000 at the beginning of 2022, by the end of the year, it would have been worth £912 in real terms. That's a loss of nearly 9%. Now, given that inflation seems to have peaked, 2023 is likely to be better, but not that much better. Easy access ICES are offering anywhere between 0.65% and 3%, according to MoneyFax, which means even if inflation drops from its current double-digit levels down to the Prime Minister's target for 2023 of around 5%, savers are still going to be seeing a fall in their buying power. Investing, on the other hand, stands a bit more of a fighting chance against inflation. With shares, some companies have strong pricing power, which gives them the ability to pass on rising costs to their customers by raising prices. In turn, this should translate into higher profits, which should boost share prices and so the value of stock markets. Other investable assets, such as commodities like gold and oil, have also historically fared quite well when inflation is running hot. With the stocks and shares ISA proving scrappier when it comes to inflation, they pull ahead in round four. Can the cash ISA stage a remarkable comeback in our final round? Let's find out. The unexpected is always around the corner and with cash ISAs, you know your funds are easy to get hold of and the value of your savings won't suddenly drop. With investing, if stock markets are having a rough time, then the value of your investments may fall. Of course, the worst thing you could do during these times is crystallize your losses by clicking sell at your brokerage. But you may have no other choice if you really need the cash. For example, fixing a leaky roof. It's why you should always have between three to six months of living expenses as readily available cash just to tide you over in the case of an emergency. Access to cash sees us go down to the final bell and cash slices have landed an uppercut and won the final round. What a finish. So who wins, the cash ISA or the stocks and shares ISA? Well, everyone knows that you have different tummies for broccoli and for ice cream. There are short-term needs for cash and long-term needs for stock market investing. Given that we're allowed to spread our £20,000 a year ISA allowance across multiple types of ISA, you can happily digest both in tandem. The crowd were hoping for a knockout blow, but it ends a draw. For more, please go to the Steps to Investing YouTube channel or stepstoinvesting.com.